Welcome back to Catch-22 Rugby, and now it's time for something a little bit different. As you might have seen when it comes to the Six Nations, we are massive fans of fantasy rugby, but we've taken things a little bit further. Alongside setting up the Catch-22 Rugby Open, a fantasy league for you lot to take part in, we're also getting a second league on the go with some friends of the channel. Taking inspiration from the NFL, we have made a fantasy rugby draft that we're calling the Kongs Cup. So we start our journey in Swansea on Six Miss Eve, and I'm heading to Cardiff for draft night. Cue a travel montage. Church Strange. Just like that, we're at our rendezvous for the evening, the Queen's Vaults in Cardiff. Draft night wouldn't be complete without some willing participants, so we've roped in a few friends of the channel. YouTube's Andrew Ford and his mate Henry have joined us, alongside CC from Library Rugby, who's also made the trip down from North Cardiff. Just waiting for one more person, but of course, it's Daniel from Catch-22 Rugby. So while we enjoy our first pint, now's probably the best time to go through the rules of draft night. So we'll be visiting five pubs in Cardiff and playing five mini games at each location. Things like cards, darts, you get the idea. Based on who wins and loses, a draft order will be decided. Players will take it in turns to select rugby players from the Six Nations that will be exclusive to their fantasy teams. After each round, the draft order resets after every pub we visit, so doing well in every minigame is crucial to drafting a good team. With only 30 draft slots available throughout the evening, picking good rugby players is key, as any player not selected will be freely available for everyone in the Kongs Cup. So if I was to pick Antoine Dupont, for example, only I can have him in my team. But by the end of the night, if no one selected, say, to Lupe Falatau, then anyone is free to use him for their fantasy teams. Come the end of the Six Nations, whoever has the most points in our league is the winner of the Kongs Cup. Right, so with that out of the way, let's head off into the night and make a short walk across the road to our first destination for the draft games. After seeing the old arcade was a little too busy, we moved up to our backup option, the pub for the first round, the Owen Glindur. Owen Glindur, not Owen Glindour. Cheers Dave for correcting us on that. Anyways, the first mini game that we're starting with is a classic, Split the G. Fairly fitting given it's the Guinness Six Nations. This is a fairly simple one. Each person has to take a sip of Guinness, but whoever lands the closest to the middle of the G on their first sip is the winner. I think there's a contract when you serve Guinness, it has to be the Guinness glass. Lovely bit of trivia, that. Anyways, first up is Andrew, who's opting for a no-look approach here. Will this work out for him? Ooh. Ah, he's nailed it. Ooh. You know what? He's got it bang on. He's got it bang on. That's going to take some beating. But well, next up, we have Henry, who's going for a rather aggressive approach for this one, and unfortunately overcooks it. Oh, well, no. Overcooked it, isn't he? He has. He's done too much. Flying the flag for Catch-22 Rugby, Daniel opts for a pinkies up pose, but will the finer things tactic work right. for him? Turn around, turn around. CC for line break is next up, and despite the little bit of spillage coming from his glass, how will he get on? Oh, oh no. no. Turn around, turn no, around, no. turn around. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, it's myself. Trying the slow but steady precision approach, but this one doesn't quite work for me. Well undercooked and not even reaching the bottom of the harp. So with game one now over, we have our selection order for the first round of the draft. Andrew takes the first pick with his perfect sip. Henry comes in second despite overcooking. Daniel in third, myself fourth, and picking last this round is CC. Time for the selections. Oh, I'm gonna go Owen Farrell. Oh, but guys, I'm choosing this bet. Dupont, please. Anton Dupont. I'm gonna go Marcus Smith. I like that. Yeah, for some reason we didn't film myself and CC, but to confirm our picks, I went for Dan Bigger and CC's gone for Untermack. So to confirm the selections for the first round. No surprises that fly halves dominate the picks and DuPont also makes the cut going second overall. Before the next pub, add time. Well, no, not really actually. We don't have enough traction to warrant any advertiser attention, so why don't you do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Cheers. Okay, next pub. Given the Irish are in town for the Six Nations fixture against Wales tomorrow, it seems only fitting. Little O'Neill's is next on the agenda. No more drinking games for this draft, so everyone's moved on to their preferred pints. Yo, do a lot of YouTube videos and highlights. Right? It's a video of me nearly scoring a try for Bangor UAE, and Benny's got a video of me scoring a try for the Oscars. Is that enough for a highlight video? Right, game number two is fingers. A straightforward game where players keep a single finger on a bottle. One by one, players shout a number while everyone either keeps or removes a finger. If the number you shout matches the remaining fingers, you win and remove yourself from the game. As you can imagine, this takes a bit of time, so thanks to a bit of time-lapse editing, we have a draft order ready for round two. Winning fingers and first up is Henry. 
I'm going to go for Damien Pinot. Oh, <laughs> Daniel goes second. Josh Van der Fleer. Third is myself. CC is in fourth. I'll go for Freddie Stewart. And in dead last, we've got Andrew. I'm gonna go for Moet Farner. So to recap, the backs once again dominating the early picks with talents like Stewart, Pano, and Ramos all going. The big fantasy hitters are slowly being snapped up. Now we were tempted to stick around and watch it in the 20s for a bit, but no, this is draft night and serious business still needs to be taken care of. Onto a Cardiff Classic for round three, the Roma Tavern. A great little boozer that also has a dartboard. Back onto the Guinness for this one, partially because Daniel was still haunted by his poor performance in Split the G earlier on. Okay mate, yeah, good effort, but doesn't count. Get over it. Onto darts for round three. Nice and easy, the best score off three darts decides the draft order. Quick shout out to Harry and the rest of the old boys from Glan Taff who allowed us to play around their pool tournament. Nice one boys. Starting off with Andrew, ooh, double camera. Starting off with Andrew who hits a 20 to start with, followed by a triple 20, and just for good measure, another triple 20. Got a triple 20. Henry next up with a double 20 to start, and that's another 20 for a second, but it all goes Pete Tong on the last one. 60 still a very respectable score. CC kicks things off with a no score, but follows up with a triple five with his second dart. Hits a one as his no score dart falls off. It's not the great to score, and he gets himself a 16. Daniel starting strong with a 16 straight off, followed by a 20. Can he beat Henry? Ah. Last up is me. Start things off with a five. Not great. Let's see what I can get. Oh, a nine. And, oh no. 14. Oh, oh, yeah, so that's me in last place for round three. No surprises that Andrew gets the first pick with a score of 140, but who will he go for? I'm going to go for Finn Russell. If you look in the dictionary and look for a complete winger, you get Josh Adams. I'm going for Josh Adams. I like that. Right, I'm having a real conflict you know, between Scotland and England. I'm going Scotland. It's going to be Duhan van der Merwe. Good call. I'm going to have Tyke Byrne. Oh, what a shot. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to go Maro Itoji. So a couple more forwards are starting to appear, but superstars like Finn Russell and van der Merwe all get nabbed in the third round. Yeah, so I tried to avoid tangents in this video, but let's talk about Cardiff for a bit. People often wonder why it's one of the rugby capitals of the world, but when you've got so many bars, pubs, restaurants and cafes only two minutes away from the stadium, you can certainly understand its appeal. Also home to the infamous WRU hotel that cost over 50 million to refurbish. I took my mom there for Mother's Day. <laughs> right, round four up next, and it's Brewdog. So the original plan was to play a game of cards, but we somehow lost them along the way. We did find ourselves a suitable replacement, however. For those not in the know, Cards Against Humanity is an awful game where players are rewarded by producing the most vulgar and inappropriate answers based off the cards that you have. No surprise that half the content from this section is blurred thanks to YouTube's monetization rules, so we'll try to keep things PG-13 where possible. I really hope I get to use these. Yeah, no chance of that, then let's just skip to the results. One by one, everyone is eliminated, but would you believe it, I take the first pick in round four. I'm gonna go, um, Aldrich, France. I'm going to go Justin Tipper. Oh. I've been thinking about this for a while, but I'm sitting with it. Dan Sheehan. Oh. I'm thinking, luck of the Irish, Gary Ringrose. Oh. I'm going to go Gary Ringrose. I'm going to go for P.S. Koeman. Oh. Is that our first prop? For the first time, forwards dominate the picks and some seriously exciting names get swooped up in round four. Time for the fifth and final round, and in case you've forgotten, there is a reason why we've called this draft the Kong's Cup. An institution of Cardiff and Bristol, Kong is a bar cum video arcade that's become a popular spot for most of us. But just as importantly, they have a ping pong table. We had a chat pre-draft and it only seemed right for the draft to be named after one of our favourite spots on the tour, hence why it's called the Kong's Cup. Right then, round five is to be decided by a game of beer pong. First one to get the ping pong ball into the glass wins. Simple, right? Well, not so much. It's fair to say the effects of the pub crawl has started to impact our accuracy and high performance abilities. Uh, a couple of close calls, but we spent the best part of 15 minutes trying to get a single shot in the glass. Oh. 
in the end, we just gave up and faked it for the camera. Yeah, not ideal. So we agreed the fairest way to select the last round is on alphabetical names. Andrew was first up yet again. Jameson Gibson Park. I'm gonna go Jonathan Sexton. I don't think he's been taken yet. Jack Morgan. Jack Morgan. This far ahead. <laughs> you are. I see you, Campbell. Ryudaya. Oh, buddy, I'm gonna go football. I haven't had any footballers. Cyril Bye. And with the last scribble and a flick of a pen, the draft is complete. So let's check out our final picks. Plenty of good names going with the usual suspects getting drafted, so your DuPonts, Van der Fleers and Biggers, but it has to be said some serious big names have gone undrafted for all of us to use. Falatau, Liam Williams, James Lowe and Capuzzo, just to name a few. Regardless of selections, it was a good night had by all despite a couple of dodgy dart throws, some questionable cards against humanity and some shock and beer pong skills. It was definitely worth a 20 quid train ticket down from Swansea. But enough about the draft, let's see how we got on during the first first round of the Six Nations. Good work from Duhan van der Merwe! This is astonishing! A wonderful display by van der Merwe against England worked well for Daniel's selection as he takes the top spot after round one. Henry takes up second place while I finish the podium spots in third. Looking at Daniel's side, he certainly made use of his draft picks with Marcus Smith, Van der Fleer and Sheehan all collecting valuable points, so well done that man. But hold up, what's this in last place? Oh dear, oh dear Andrew, what have you done? After a bit of WhatsApp investigation, it turns out he accidentally submitted his team, but put it in the wrong group. There were a couple of calls for him to be disqualified from the first round, but we had a chat, and it only seems fair that we take a screenshot of his score and add it in afterwards. So, let's see what that does for the table. Uh oh, never mind, Andrew. Anyways, well, Daniel takes the top spot, but it's still early days, with four rounds left of the Guinness Six Nations. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching Cash 22 Rugby. If you like what you've seen, why don't you like this video and consider giving us a subscribe? A lot of time and effort goes into these videos, so if you'd like to see more from us here at Cash 22 Rugby, you know what to do. Once again, I've been Benny from Cash 22 Rugby, and we'll see you in the next one.